Josh I Shapiro, think. who was supposed to be <laughs> the vice president, everybody thought it was going to be him. I heard something about a murder with a girl that worked for him. Yeah, well, not worked for him, but there's a connection. But let me ask you guys, anybody here a uh, forensic pathologist? Has anybody ever worked as a coroner? I just No, but my favorite show is and was, was and is, the first 48, and I I know what they do. Yeah. I watched a lot of Law & Order reruns. Yeah, yeah but that's really that the close extent. Enough? That's the extent, but, hey, but I've watched at least seven seasons, so I think that qualifies me to know who did it. Okay, so let me ask you a question. A woman is found dead. She has 20 stab wounds to her, 10 of which mm -hmm. are in the back of her body and in the back of her head. As you guys, with zero coroner or medical forensic experience other than watching television, what would your results be? Would you rule that as a homicide, or would you look at that and say that's a suicide? I'd flag it as highly suspicious at the yeah. very least yeah okay. well, that's homicide it gets by the way it's a suicide that she was trying to cover up oh <laughs> she's trying to cover up her own suicide okay. now, maybe she was holding a bunch of knives and rolled down a hill and that's how they all well, she's in an like apartment that. so that's impossible if she was okay. working for a republican mm -hmm. it's murder if she's a democrat it's suicide okay well she mm -hmm. pro i don't know if she was a republican or democrat because uh she's dead and she died uh 12 years ago but this is a weird story so let's dive into it if you guys remember last week and that why I asked that question will come into play in a little bit. But last week, this was tweeted out. This is a Mediaite story. Um, if we could pull up the first link, Mediaite, and they're reporting. Uh, no, that's not the right one, but it's okay. Uh, video posted by Philadelphia Mayor touting that's Shapiro it. as VP. There it is. Uh, laughing my ass off. Did the mayor leak it? So do you guys remember last Friday... The Philadelphia, the mayor of Philadelphia, her name is Sherelle Parker. She posted a tweet with a video saying that she was proud to be supporting Harris for president and Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro for vice president. Here's a tweet, and if you look at the bottom, it's got 7.5 oh, million wow. views. Wow! Now the reports were that the mayor of Philadelphia accidentally leaked the story that Josh Shapiro was Kamala Harris's VP pick. Here is the video. If we want to play this real quick, this video was tweeted out again last Friday, six day, five days before Kamala Harris makes her VP announcement. And all indications after this tweet comes out is that Josh Shapiro is getting the nod and he will be the VP pick. Okay. Go ahead. Philadelphia, we got work to do. We're ready to rumble, y'all. Yeah. I'm Mayor Sherelle Parker, here with leaders from across our region. Kamala Harris is on the road to victory. And the road goes through Pennsylvania. And in Pennsylvania, we're united behind her. The woman that's tough and can lead. Are we ready to fight for it? She is the right person at the right time for this job that's going to do right by labor, going to do right by working people. And I can't think of a better partner than our governor, Josh Shapiro. Partner, remember that. His policies have not only supported the working class, but have set standards for progressive leadership that benefits all citizens. Philadelphia building trade. IBW for Kamala Harris. Montgomery County. Bucks. Bucks yeah. County. Delco. Chester. Philly. Philly. South Philly. North Philly, North Philly. North Philly. North Philly. North we're getting behind Kamala Harris. Oh, Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. <laughs> Kamala Harris for president. And Josh Shapiro. Josh Shapiro. Josh Shapiro for vice president. Wow. wow. I, I think, I think they got the last 12 white people Kamala left in Philly. Kamala Harris, no, you dad. stand with her. Together, we can do this. We are one city. Well, so this, 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 this came out. This came out Friday. And it's not like just some council person no. tweeted this out. This is the mayor of Philadelphia, the biggest city in Pennsylvania tweeting out that Josh Shapiro is getting the nod. Wow. Now the reports come out. Philly Magazine political writer Ernest Owens tweeted that his sources told him a staffer connected to Mayor Sherelle Parker's team accidentally posted the video early and that it wasn't actually scheduled to go out until Monday. We work in a production company. We put together videos. Guys, would that accidentally ever Never. get produced? Imagine Never. the amount of hours that it takes for the editors to go and put something like that together. Oh. We see it in the editing yeah. bay here. There's no way that you accidentally produce a video like that no. and then go ahead and leak it by accident. No. No. So that comes out on Monday. Let's fast forward to uh, 8-5. This article comes out from the New York Post, and this is where the mysterious get death this up, please? of uh, it, they, they say Aaron Greenberg, but her name is actually Ellen Greenberg. Uh, Ellen Greenberg was killed or committed suicide, depending on which variation you want to believe. She died in 2011, 20 stab wounds and an apparent suicide, but her parents have won the right to challenge the ruling 
and change it from suicide to a homicide. Uh, the family of Ellen Greenberg has fought for the against the city of Philadelphia for more than a decade to overrule, overturn the city's ruling of the death of the teacher. Uh, her body was found inside of her apartment. The apartment was locked. She had 10 stab wounds to the back of her head and neck. She died during a blizzard on January 26th of 2011. Here are some of the like, photos. Dude, are you, wait, are That's you freaking insane. Time out. They really ruled that a suicide. You're dead serious. Yes. While investigating Ellen, Ellen's uh, death in 2011, Philadelphia police initially suspected that the 27-year-old teacher committed suicide, noting the lack of forced entry, defensive wounds, or DNA on her body that wasn't there. Medical examiner Marlon Osborne determined the death to be a homicide, but later reversed course and amended the ruling to suicide more than a month later. So originally that, look how many stab wounds this woman had. Who, have you ever seen somebody kill themselves, Rob, and stab? I mean, you'd have to have an incredible pain tolerance to do that. Oh, and my God. That you would have to take some type of barbiturates or alcohol or some type of sedative to make your body not feel pain in order for you to be able oh, to continue. And I don't even that. know how you stab yourself. No, in the Rob, back that the angle, by the way, that angle is coming straight in. There's no way, unless she perfectly held it and was coming. Dude, that's such horseshit. Now, here's the thing even judges in the city of Philadelphia, and this is from the New York Post article that came out on the 5th, judges have acknowledged the, and I quote, deeply flawed investigation of Greenberg by the Philadelphia police, the DA, and the medical examiner's office. So again, this comes out on the 5th. That's Monday. So in between Friday, where the news gets leaked that Josh Shapiro is going to be the VP pick, yep. and Tuesday's announcement, which according to insiders, Kamala Harris didn't actually make until Tuesday morning. Reports were, Connor, can you attest to this? I read online that reports were going into Monday night Kamala had not made her decision and she needed the night to sleep on it before making the announcement on Tuesday. Is that correct? Yes, there, there were allegedly phone calls that took place between her and Tim Walls and then her and Josh Shapiro. Uh, I believe it was also the New York Post that reported she ultimately liked Walls' uh, attitude better and there seemed to be some kind of issue that Shapiro took where he seemed less confident she was going to win. And that question seems to have been what might have actually been the deciding factor. I think it was this. I think it was Josh Shapiro's involvement in the cover-up of the murder of Ellen Greenberg, and here's why. So, uh, this article comes out from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Again, remember timeline. Friday, they announced Josh Shapiro accidentally going to be the VP. Uh, Monday, this article comes out from the New York Post, where Ellen Greenberg's family have reversed a Supreme Court ruling uh, in the state of Philadelphia, where they're going to reopen the case and look and see if it's homicide rather than suicide. This article comes out Tuesday morning before Kamala makes the announcement. Governor Governor Josh Shapiro and the Ellen Greenberg case explained. And in this article, it details how Josh Shapiro was actually the district attorney. He was the attorney general's office with the city of uh, with the state of Pennsylvania in 2018. When that office was tasked with reviewing the case, he stood by the city's 2011 ruling of suicide and then continued to do so through 2022. So they actually go back and look at this case and Josh Shapiro in 2019 says no, it's a suicide. Why does Josh Shapiro rule it a suicide? Could it be that perhaps Ellen Greenberg's fiance, and his name is Samuel Goldberg, has ties oh. to Josh Shapiro, the attorney general, who in 2019 ruled that the case was suicide. And by the way, not to tell you, Rob, every single person you said was Jewish. Yep. Shapiro, Goldberg, Gre Goldberg, Greenberg, Greenberg, a lot of Bergs and a lot of Steens. Oh, we're going to get into the <laughs> Schwartzman's involvement. Okay, no, we're not doing it. It even, it even involves the Philadelphia swanky mine line community, which real estate agents call the city's crown Jew. Jewel. <laughs> Jewel. So I was just, Jewel. Yeah, I was. Um, Christ. <laughs> what this is and what this looks like, there's a great YouTuber, and I want to give him a shout out because I found this guy's videos when I started reading about this. This guy has been doing videos about this cover up since 2019. Oh, wow. So this is way before Josh Shapiro became a, a, a common knowledge across the United States as a possible VP candidate. This guy, Gavin Fish, props to you, Gavin. Go to his website. There's like a tip jar. I'm trying to get him on the show because I think this is fascinating. Yep. Gavin does a deep dive, <laughs> and Gavin writes this article that came out uh, actually in July before any of this became public. The date on this is July 28th, 
And it's an opinion article. Anti-Semites shouldn't stop Josh Shapiro from getting the Veep nod, but a murder cover-up should. Wow. I want to dig into the death of Ellen Greenberg and what happened that night, as well as her the possible involvement by her live-in fiancé, Samuel Goldberg, who has ties to Josh Shapiro. Here's how the ties break down. Sam Goldberg calls 911 January 26th of 2011 at 6.31 p.m. Remember that time. 6.31, Goldberg calls the police to report that Ellen was laying on the floor with blood everywhere. According to Goldberg, he had left their sixth-floor apartment 45 minutes earlier to work out in the gym on the first floor. So he goes down and starts working out at 45 minutes before that takes you to what 5 46 p.m 5 46 when he comes back i mean how can you get a workout in in 45 minutes you got to take the sixth floor down to the first floor to go to the Unless gym he's doing like a quick rep so you're getting in there real quick and yeah, yeah okay fine we'll okay, give him the benefit of the doubt yeah. he comes back upstairs and tells investigators the door to their apartment was locked from the inside with a hotel swinging door lock you know those ones that swing back the and metal, forth they're the yeah. metal ones like yeah. that so he couldn't so nobody could have broken into the apartment he says he couldn't reach ellen by phone text or email email or by shouting through the cracked door so he broke through it and found Ellen unresponsive on the floor of the kitchen now Connor you're married Humberto you're married you two eligible bachelors very eligible and very we handsome. have a lot of sex yeah sure yep. you come home and you find the women that you're <laughs> courting or having yeah. sex with or your wives <laughs> are dead on the floor from 20 stab wounds who's the first person that you call 911 911 911 911 yeah Okay, suspicious. Well, uh, yeah. Humberto's, Humberto's like, like I, got, I got a guy. I got a guy. Ray Donovan. Okay, <laughs> so remember, he goes down for the workout at 6. I'm sorry, 5. 546. 46. He calls 911 at 631. But at 6.14 p.m., he actually makes his first call. He doesn't call 911. Who does he call? He calls his cousin, Cayman Schwartzman, Uh and his uncle, James Schwartzman, who are two prominent lawyers in the city of Philadelphia. 626, James Schwartzman calls, uh, I'm sorry, the first call lasts five minutes, 614 to 619. So again, remember that 45-minute workout? That 45-minute workout goes from 546 to 631 when he found the body to actually 15 minutes earlier. So you're talking about a workout of 546 to 614. So you're getting a workout not, in, in and 20, taking the elevator, 25 minutes? Elevator and everything? Uh, probably not. So would you go for a quick sprint on yeah, the treadmill while, not, while, while you're... Sus. While you, so you're, we're talking about a time window of 20, 25 minutes that no, you're gone from the apartment no. where your fiancé gets stabbed 10 times in the front and 10 times in the back? I don't believe But okay, that. 6, he calls Schwartzman, came in Schwartzman at 614 p.m., that call lasts five minutes. Then over the next seven minutes, Sam Goldberg, Ellen Greenberg's fiance, uh, misses several calls from his uncle, James Schwartzman, who is Cayman Schwartzman's father, who was a prominent judge in the city of Philadelphia. At 626, James Schwartzman tries calling again, and Sam picks up the phone. However, we don't know how long this phone call lasts. Cayman and Schwartzman actually go to the apartment building before first responders get there. Wow. They actually take. Okay, so they go there maybe for support for Sam Goldberg, yeah. their friend, whatever. The next day, they return to the apartment, and they take from the apartment Ellen's laptop, her work laptop, another laptop, and her cell phone from the crime scene, and then return it to Philadelphia police two days later. Weird. In what scenario are police investigating the body of a woman, her living fiancé who's only been missing for 24 minutes to go downstairs and go do gymming of whatever sorts he's doing? Yeah. You allow that man's cousin and that man's uncle to come into the apartment and take her possession. But here's where the ties go back to Josh Shapiro. Judge Schwartzman, the father, James Schwartzman, one of the people that the suspect, now in my opinion suspect, uh, 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 Scott, or what is his name again? Steve Greenberg? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm butchered. Sam Goldberg. <laughs> Sam B- Goldberg. <laughs> sorry, I'm, mix- I'm mixing up all of the... Yes. Ethnicities in this it. one. Um, Shapiro, okay, Josh Shapiro ends up, it, they, this this investigative researcher, again, Gavin Fish, go check him out. He ends up uncovering ties between Josh Shapiro and Judge James Schwartzman, uh, uh, Schwartzman's daughter, Kimberly Schwartzman Kimmel. The two of them went to a private school together growing up and had other connections through both their children's school activities. In fact, this investigative journalist 
has found financial ties between this family, the Schwartzmans, who are related to Sam Goldman, the fiancé of this dead girl, and has found that there have been political donations that have been made from the Kimmels to Shapiro's political campaigns in the past. So there's money going from the Schwartzman family to Shapiro's campaign. Shapiro is the district attorney of Pennsylvania and opens up the case, looks at it in 2019, and rules that that case was, in fact, a suicide. But he fails to mention that the person who committed suicide, that woman, Ellen Greenberg's fiance, Sam Goldberg, had ties to James and Common Schwartzman through their sister slash daughter, this woman, Kimberly Schwartzman Kimmel. This all looks suspect. Wow. Well, dude, I, for, first of all, kudos to you. It, you just were spinning yeah. just a smorgasbord <laughs> of Jewish buffet names. <laughs> I don't know how the hell you remembered Schwartzman, Shapiro, Goldberg, Steen and Rothman. I don't, Greenberg. dude. I'm so impressed. <laughs> Thank you. Number one and number two, Rob. So, what did she know or what did she have? Was it? Do you think she had stuff on her that that incriminated her? Somebody, somebody wanted to get rid of her for something. Well, it could, it could be just simply a, a cheating. A, a, yeah, a pro, a, like listen, maybe, maybe Ellen and I don't want to be smirch her name. I don't, I don't know what happened, right? But maybe there was some <laughs> type of infidelity on one part person's part. Somebody gets angry and finds that they act out, they murder someone, and then they need help covering up the crime. The fact that this guy called his uncle and his cousin 17 minutes before he calls 911 to me is very suspect. Then the fact that the police allow the cousin and the uncle to take laptops with, I mean, the guy's got to be the, if you're, I would imagine if any of us were in this situation, we would be the prime suspect in the murder of our fiance. For sure. Right? Yeah. So why would the police allow the prime suspect's family to retrieve electronic devices from the murdered woman's apartment? All of it just seems so if, if you cause, Because if you know them and there's a relationship, you want to look out for the person. For, and great point that you're making. I, I, was, I know people that were hanging out and partying. They were poisoned with fentanyl, and their three people are dying or dead. And the person calls the drug dealer, their 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 people, to come and clean up everything so that that person that didn't die not look bad. That is the most suspect shit you could do. Nine one one is the first thing. And dude, if somebody, if you sprained your, if you hurt your ankle and you fell, nine one one. You're not calling. I'm not calling your family or judges or lawyers that I know. That's big time sus. I think that played a big part in him not because think about it, if you expose that, if that is out, they would have been going after this guy for Trump would have been the fact that the the fact that it was accidentally leaked on Friday that he was going to be the VP nominee and then this story comes out Monday and then Kamala <coughs> still hasn't made her mind up by Monday night and then makes wow. a decision on Tuesday and then the news starts reporting on it. That to me just goes, well, they knew. They knew that there's something shady here, and they didn't want this dragging down Kamala's campaign. So in my opinion, I think she would have picked Josh Shapiro had the New York Post not p reported on this story and reported on the family getting the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania to overturn their rulings and reopen the case. I think this is bad news for Josh Shapiro, and I wouldn't be surprised if in the next you know, 6, 8, 12 months we start to see that this guy had more involvement in this oh. case. It gets overruled, and it was not a suicide. It was a homicide, and then it opens up, well, what did you know? Oh, and now all right. of a sudden you have the governor of a state involved in the cover-up of a murder of a 27-year-old female teacher in the city. Yep. Because there's because hands down, just from the photos that you showed from the autopsy, there is absolutely zero zero chance that girl committed suicide. Yeah. Let's just I'm gonna say that again. From the photos that we saw, no way she straight up stabbed herself because those those angles were going like this. How did she do? How how meticulously of a stabbing do you have to do? And you know the force that you need to stab a skull. And in your skull, Umberto, you a saw the mark. And here's skull. Here, here's another important fact. According to most suicide statistics and the way it's done, women don't tend to kill themselves like that. Women no. try to avoid uh, big, messy, painful things. Men shoot themselves. Men jump off buildings. Men jump off bridges. 
women it tends to be take pills, uh, take pills uh, slit wrist in the bathtub kind of thing. Things that don't cause a gigantic mess and make it look horrific. And by the, so the odds of a woman stabbing herself to death, not even really. in a legitimate suicide, are almost zero. Yeah. And that's a crime of passion, too. You know, like that's a, a that's crime where somebody did something to you, you're pissed off at them and they like, overly compensate. Yeah, for that's it. pissed off. But to like, be, that looks dude, like cheating. That's completely sus. And that guy has a lot of questions, bro. So if you're out there, if all oh, people that are investigating this, please. Please dig into this freaking. I, I don't drop us a line. We'll uh, we'll promote. Oh whatever yeah, got. please let us know because guess what? I, Rob, what was that guy's name again? Gavin Fish. Go watch his videos because he has a whole tutorial on like when he started reco- like breaking this down three, four, five years ago to now, and it's really interesting to watch the progression. So uh, Gavin Fish on YouTube. Go and look him up. And GavinFish.com, I think, is his website. What's up, everybody? Vincent O'Shawn here. If you want to see me and the entire Valuetainment crew, we will be at the Vault Conference September 4th through the 7th at the Palm Beach Convention Center, hosted by none other than Patrick McDavid and featuring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Guys, this is the place to be. If you are an entrepreneur and you want to level up, do not miss this opportunity. This is the best place to network. If you want tickets, go to thevaultconference.com. Do not waste time. This thing is going to sell out, and I will see you guys there. Peace and love. So if you like this clip, click right here. And if you want to see more like it, click right here. Stay angry, patriots.